Good evening, friends. So I'll be giving a very brief overview on uh, acute poisoning neurologic manifestation. So this is in the context of uh, is in the context of the journal presentation being made on non-invasive airway management in comatose patients uh, that came up in JAMA that will be discussed by subsequently after this talk. So I wish to acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Bhavya, who helped me develop this content. So it's a brief overview on neurological manifestations of acute poisoning. So if this possibly asked as a question in DNB, uh, some sort of a clarity is needed as to how we would approach this uh, poisoning. And it is good to know what sort of poisonings that we can do a non-invasive airway management. Uh, many a times we have patients coming with overdose with, say, diazepam poisoning or uh, benzodiazepine poisoning or even alcohol intoxication. So GCS may be six, seven, but we not necessarily we would jump and intubate. So because most of these toxicity we know are reversible and possibly you can wait and they would recover. And this trial was mainly to look into that aspect. So I'll just take you through a brief overview on the type of neurological manifestations that happens with uh, this sort of poisoning. So when we talk about uh, poisoning, we have to categorize them into few categories. So when we talk about uh, the categories or the broad uh, dimensions of poisoning, so one, you would be obviously looking at the poisons or the drugs. I would use the word drugs causing sedation or obtentation or stuporous. Then the second is the drugs that can cause agitation because all these are neurological manifestations. And the third important aspect is the drugs that causes seizure in a patient. So there are multiple drugs that can cause seizures and neurological manifestations. And the fourth interesting category is the drugs that cause movement disorders or akathisia. And it is said that uh, any patient who is on medications, 5% of the akathisia, so 5% of the drugs can cause akathisia. So it is a very common entity that is described. So anyone who is on any drugs, around 5% of most of the drugs can lead to akathisia. And there are certain conditions which lead to encephalopathy. So this is how one would possibly categorize the neurological manifestations caused by a drug or the poison. So any poison that you look at can act on either central nervous system or on the peripheral nervous system. And there are certain drugs which have a variable penetration in the blood-brain barrier. So most of the toxins that we talk about have a variable, variable penetration through the blood-brain barrier and the manifestations can be quite multifold and it is very variable. So it is very hard to determine which drugs are more blood-brain barrier penetration penetrable or less penetrable. And there are certain drugs which act at the neuromuscular junctions, and most of you would know that OP poisoning, which typically we deal with, tends to act on acetylcholinesterase, and uh, there is more of cooling of acetylcholine levels at the neuromuscular junction, leading to the weakness, so on and so forth. So, so these are some of the uh, structural dimensions, the way these drugs act. So central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, uh, neuromuscular junction and variable penetration into the blood-brain barrier. So when we look at the classification of the drugs, so as I said, we look into five major categories, drugs that causes sedation or obtentation, or the drugs that cause agitation, involuntary movement, seizures. So based on this, one could classify the drugs into various categories. So one important is anticholinergic. So here, most of these drugs tend to cause delirium in a patient and uh, antihistamine is one category uh, where chlorpheniramine malleate which is commonly used, diphenhydramine. TCA is an important anticholinergic drug which can lead to neurological manifestations, amitriptyline, so on and so forth. And antipsychotics which we tend to use often in ICU, haloperidol, thioridazine, so these are some of the drugs which can cause neurological manifestation. And antiemetics like chlorpromazine can lead to extrapyramidable symptoms. And so, so these are the common drugs which, which can lead to toxicity and lead to neurological manifestation. So there are cholinergic agents and OP poisoning is one which we commonly deal with. So dimethyl, and there is a separate video on that you can go and watch. So dimethyl compound and diethyl compounds are the two broad categories of OP. Most severe manifestations are caused by dimethyl and malathion and centine come in the dimethyl group. Then there are now gas like sarin and VX. So then you have the third category, which is opioids. 
So uh, and the, the recreational drugs that are used like heroin, codeine, and morphine are naturally occurring opioids. And there are opioid-like compounds like clonidine and clonazepine. So and these cause typically sedative effects. And cholinergic compounds cause more of agitation. And anticholinergic cause more of delirium and uh, stupor sort of a situation. Then you have this sympathomimetic agent which causes more of agitation like adrenergic agents like cocaine, amphetamines and pencyclidines. And these are used as recreational drugs and they cause sympathetic hyperactivity and more agitation would be the manifestation of these drugs. Then there are these xanthines like theophylline and caffeine which again causes uh, agitation. And there are atypical antidepressants like neuramine reuptake inhibition. Like these are the older drugs you would have heard of, enlafaxine, trazodone. So all these can cause agitation. So this is a fourth category of drugs. So we spoke about cholinergic, anticholinergic, opioids, sympathomimetic. Then there are these sedative hypnotics which causes sedation. Alcohol can be ethylene or methylene glycol or ethylene glycol or ethyl alcohol or methyl alcohol. Barbiturates, phenobarbitone and pentobarbital. And we do see often sometimes uh, oh, toxicity with barbiturate which come now and then. Then benzodiazepine is the most common drug toxicity one would possibly see in intensive care. So it can be any of the benzodiazepines and uh, so lorazepam, diazepam, midazolam, so on and so forth. And miscellaneous drugs, there are this gamma butyrate and baclofen. So these are the categorization of the drugs, acute poisoning, causing neurological manifestations. So you can... For all the DNB trainees, if this question is asked, you can categorize as cholinergic, anticholinergic, then opioids, sedatives, and sympathomimetic. So these are the uh, five categories that you could put things in. So the common manifestations of CNS toxicity, as I said, agitation is the commonest one that they manifest. Then once it is severe form of agitation, they can go into delirium and then they go into stupor. And, and they can go into comatose stress. So this is a typical spectrum we see in ICU when someone comes with toxicity. Initially, they can have a state of agitation, they move to the delirium, becomes tuberous, and then more coma. So there are distinctive group of drugs that causes uh, seizure. So you can use this mnemonic. You can remember this drug by using this mnemonic, Otis Campbell. So O stands for opioid. So they can cause seizure. T stands for theophylline and tricyclic antidepressants, which cause seizure. I stands for insulin, means hypoglycemia or INH, which can cause seizure. S stands for salicylates. C is cocaine, cyanide, or carbon monoxide. A stands for amphetamine or anticholinergic. M stands for metaldehyde. And P is like carbapenems, imipenem is known to cause seizure disorder, and sometimes levofloxacin also is touted. So any drug can cause, so you can remember as penems. And B is barbiturates and E is ethanol. Uh, so L is for lead and lithium. So this is a very easy mnemonic to remember. What is Campbell? These are the groups of drugs that can lead to seizure disorder. So, so it's just a broad overview to try to remember and categorize the drugs that causes neurological manifestations. And this is a distinctive group of drugs that can cause seizure. So very important to know. And when we when you have a patient with the drugs causing seizure, generally the pathognomonic feature is there is an imbalance between the neurotransmitters within the brain. There is an imbalance of glutamate and gamma, GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. And typical manifestations due to imbalance lead to generalized tonic-clonic seizures. And tricyclic antidepressants, they act on the sodium channel in the brain and they lower the seizure threshold. So that is the way they cause seizures. And cyanide causes cellular hypoxemia and oxygen consumption gets reduced and that leads to seizures due to cyanide. And the theophylline and caffeine, they act on the adenosine receptors and they can cause refractory seizures. So these are some of the uh, molecular mechanisms as to how seizures are caused by the some of the key drugs. Uh, so TCA, which we tend to see, they predominantly act on the sodium channels and lower the seizure threshold. Theophylline, we use we used to use a lot of deriphylline and so on and so forth for COPD. They act on adenosine receptors and can cause refractory seizures. So these are some of the mechanisms, the way these drugs cause seizures. So the the other group that we saw, so we spoke about uh, sedation, we talk about agitation, we spoke about seizures. Then the, there's an other entity called encephalopathy. Encephalopathy is typically 
caused by other organ dysfunction having an impact on the brain. Typically, you would see hepatic encephalopathy. And this can be, we are talking about acute poisoning, like if you have a paracetamol poisoning, so it would act on the cytokine P450 in the liver and lead to accumulation of n acetyl paraquinone imine, which leads to encephalopathy. So I'm sure all the listeners would know paracetamol can lead to liver failure and, uh, and encephalopathy can ensue. So any end organ dysfunction can have an impact on uh, brain and encephalopathy can ensue. And this can happen even in the drug toxicity. And someone who is a cocaine addict uh, or a heroin addict where they do the snorting, so this can lead to leukoencephalopathy and there can be increase in the lactate within the brain that leads to encephalopathy. So we are only talking about drugs causing encephalopathy and if we talk about encephalopathy, it is secondary to certain organ dysfunction. So in paracetamol, it's a liver dysfunction and in with regards to snorting of cocaine, it is due to leukoencephalopathy. When it comes to alcoholism, it is due to thiamine deficiency. So in alcoholism, there is a thiamine deficiency which leads to Wernicke's encephalopathy. So this is some of the conceptual understanding as to how encephalopathy happens due to drug toxicity. And movement disorder, so a lot of drugs can cause movement disorder. Just pay little attention to that video there. So that is an akathisia. Akathisia is a repetitive movement of uh, certain motor activity. And as I said, 5% of any drug can lead to repetitive movements and uh, and movement disorders. Uh, so the movement disorders can be dystonia. And I'm sure many of you would have seen dystonia, which can happen due to certain anti-emetics like uh, uh, chlorpromazine, uh, so on and so forth. And akathisia, the commonest drugs that are implicated are tricyclic antidepressants. The video you saw is the typical akathisia where there is repetitive movement. It can be secondary to tricyclic antidepressants, monomino oxidase inhibitor, and SSRI, selective serotonin uh, receptor uptake inhibitor, or atypical antidepressants. So these are the ones which can lead to acathesia. So remember, acathesia is something which is commonly seen where there is repetitive motor movements and it's a restless movement that can happen due to the drug. So those are, that is about the movement disorder. And stroke. Stroke is also a ma manifestation of acute poisoning and this can happen in someone who is uh, taking cocaine or snorting cocaine and it can happen due to the recreational drugs, overconsumption of recreational drugs like LSD, lysergic acid or amphetamines and its derivatives. So stroke also is one of the manifestations of acute poisoning. So and how about CNS infections? CNS infections can happen uh, especially when there is an infective endocarditis in an IV drug user or there can be meningoencephalitis or cerebral abscesses that can happen due to the underlying infective endocarditis in IV drug user. So, th so that is the sort of a conundrum that tends to happen in acute poisoning. So someone who is a drug abuser can develop endocarditis and they can that can lead to systemic embolization and lead to mening meningitis and cerebral abscesses. So that so that's in brief about the neurological manifestations are of acute poisoning. Predominantly, if you look at neurological manifestation of acute poisoning, it is all the psychotropic drugs that come, uh, that have a major role. And uh, for all the trainees, you can categorize those drugs as cholinergics, anticholinergics, opioids, sympathomimetic, uh, and anti seizure medications. And, uh, and the, the way you would categorize these uh, neurological manifestations is so sedation, uh, agitation, seizures, and movement disorders, and encephalopathy. So those are the five categorizations that you can do. And when you have any of these manifestations, obviously you need to have a differential diagnosis as to what are the other possibilities of, what are the other causes you have to rule out before you attribute it to the drug toxicity. For that, most of the ICU trainees, you would know that for all my ICU trainees, I keep telling this mnemonic, AEIOU, C. So... Uh, so A stands for alcohol arrhythmia and uh, E stands for epilepsy or electrolyte abnormalities. I is infection, O is overdose or hypoxemia, U is uremia, metabolic, uh, T is toxin trauma, I is insulin hypoglycemia, P is psychosis, S is stroke, E is endocrine. So this is the typical differential that you would think in any obtended patient before uh, you attribute it to toxin, you have to rule out all these other possible causes which may be confounding uh, the underlying sort of a diagnosis. 
So that's about it. Uh, so this is a very brief overview or a prelude to this journal presentation as to where uh, the the next speaker would be talking about uh, non-invasive airway management in drug toxicity. Uh, so thank you one and all. So I request all the listeners to present their valuable work to Journal of Acute Care. You can visit my website www.drpradeepanwapka.com to read to this picture. Thank you. Thank you, Anubhav.